Thank you, Madam Speaker. The question that those listening on will have in their minds now <laughs> is why are the National Party so afraid of the voters? What is it about the democratic process that they are so afraid of? What is it about the principle of MMP that says it's the voters who should decide the makeup of Parliament? What is it about that principle that they are so afraid of? Why do they believe that members of Parliament, once they get to Parliament, having been elected under a party banner, should be free to abandon that party banner and distort the makeup of Parliament in a way the voters never intended without going back to those voters for a mandate? It is absolutely, it is absolutely acceptable for a member of Parliament to stand up in this House and say, I do not support the position of my party, and I'm going to go back to the electorate and seek a new mandate because I don't, because I don't support the party that I got elected under. It's happened before, and members of Parliament who have done that have been rewarded by their constituents for doing just that. Tariana Turia did that. I disagreed with her doing that. I was disappointed when she did that, but she did it, and she was re-elected. She had the integrity to go back to the people of her constituency and say that she didn't feel she could be a member of this party, the Labour Party, anymore, and therefore she sought a fresh mandate from her constituents. When Winston Peters was expelled from the National Party, he had the integrity to go back to his voters and say, I am no longer a member of my party, of the party that I was elected, uh, under whose banner I was elected, and I will therefore seek a fresh mandate. And he got it. And he got it. He was not afraid of the voters. So what is it about the National Party of today? What is it that they are so afraid of that if they think that they had no longer are willing to support the position of their party, that they should not have to go back to their constituents and seek a fresh mandate. Why is that a problem? What is so affronting about that? Really has a bill in this House been the subject of so much misinformation as this one has been? And much of that misinformation, much of that misinformation has been propagated by the increasingly bizarre questions of the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Over the past couple of weeks, he has compared New Zealand to Zimbabwe in his contributions, reached back to the depths of the 19th century and invoked the name of Winston Churchill, who he told us had changed parties twice over appeasement, which the history books will say is not true. In fact, the only time Winston Churchill changed parties was once in 1904. So let's go back 120 years and consider what Nick Smith is holding up as the beacon of democratic uh, representation. What is he holding up? Well, let's go back 120 years. Women could not vote in that parliament. Half of the working class people, couldn't, uh, working class men, could not vote in that parliament. Oxford University had its own MPs in that parliament. Uh, half of the parliament, half of the parliament was reserved for rich men who, had, who gained their seats through a hereditary entitlement. That is what Nick Smith is now holding up as the beacon of democracy for New Zealanders. I think we've come a long way since then. 100 per cent of the MPs in this House are elected by the people of New Zealand, and that is exactly as it should be. And if the members of this House no longer feel that they can remain true to the policies and the platform that they were elected under, then they should go back to the people of their constituencies and they should seek a fresh mandate. And if they are standing on a point of principle and the people of New Zealand believe that it's a legitimate point of principle, then they may well be rewarded for that. But this idea, this idea that MPs, partway through a parliamentary term, can go and set up their whole, a whole new party and, and, and then for the remainder of that term represent an entirely different platform that's what the National Party are arguing for, an entirely different platform to that which they were elected under. That is what the National Party are saying that people should do, and I thoroughly disagree with that proposition. I think that members of Parliament, having been elected by the people of New Zealand on a party platform under a party banner, should stay true to that. Nobody is suggesting that the conscience vote in this House should be removed. We've seen conscience votes exercised in this very term of Parliament. And in fact, the only party in Parliament that prevented its MPs from exercising their conscience was the National Party. 
because several members indicated publicly they were going to exercise their conscience one way, and then the National Party stopped them doing that. On this side of the House, we're happy for MPs to exercise their conscience on conscience votes. They will go back to their constituents in the next election, and then people will be able to decide one way or the other. Medicinal cannabis was exactly that case. Members on our side voted for and against that. But those members who wanted to vote for the bill on the other side of the House were prevented by their party from doing so. So nobody on this side of the House is proposing that the conscience vote be done away with. Nobody is saying on this side of the House that where members disagree with their parties and the parties are OK with them voting their conscience, that, that they should be prevented from doing so. And as my colleague Andrew Little pointed out, there's history with that. Damien O'Connor disagreed with, with the Labour Party uh, on, on, on issues to do with the West Coast and has voted uh, differently to the party. He's still here. The party didn't seek to expel him from the parliament. So there's all this scaremongering on the other side about, about the potential effects of this that simply are, 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 are almost entirely false. The issue here at, at heart is that the voters of New Zealand should get the parliament that they vote for. That is what MMP is all about. And why should, why should MPs be able to leave their parties, set up new parties and remain in Parliament potentially for three years? Under the National Party's reasoning, someone could be elected under a party banner. The day after the election, they could start a whole other party, uh, promote policies completely contradictory to the platform they were elected under. And that is OK. That is not OK. And New Zealanders have been very, very clear that they don't support that approach. Because those MPs who have done that, the, the history of MMP will show, they don't generally tend to fare very well when they stand for re-election at the next election. What this bill does is it says they shouldn't get that far. They should have to seek a fresh mandate when they do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. This bill is perfectly acceptable. It says that it is the voters that should determine the makeup of Parliament, and I do not understand why the National Party think that is such an affronting idea. I call the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Well, Madam Speaker, you only get the sort of frantic speeches.